Hey T Heads, this is Don and Celine from Mayleaf. Finally, 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 after mm. hmm, 20 odd years sourcing Something tea, like that. <laughs> we finally stock a Darjeeling. Yes, oh. yes, yes. <laughs> All of those people who have written to me over the years saying, but why no Darjeeling on your collection? Why, 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 why? It's yeah. a very commonly asked question. And I understand why, because Darjeeling is such a famous tea type. And um, we don't source in India, Sri Lanka, Nepal yet, apart from now this. So it was like a new territory for us to move into, but also I really wanted to understand Darjeeling, taste a lot of Darjeeling's mm -hmm. before I even took the plunge. And after understanding it, trying to find a good one has been a real struggle, to be honest with you, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, we've tasted a lot of Darjeeling's. Well, that's, that's, that's the thing. I mean, that's the point of it these 20 odd years that you've been sourcing teas you have been tasting oh, darjeeling yeah. from like different not even samplers but like friends giving darjeeling like just i've even tasting. purchased a lot of darjeeling from yeah. other suppliers just because i wanted to sort of educate my palate <laughs> in them and i and yeah. and the sampling process um has been an interesting one because it's different mm. to chinese teas mm. but overall i just have felt that with darjeeling what you get overall as a general sort of sweeping generalization is that you get a lot of fragrance you get uh, and i'm talking about both first flush and second flush teas and we're going to be talking mm. about darjeeling i'm giving you sort of my primer on darjeeling um very shortly but lots of fragrance really really promising on the nose um, sometimes a bit too much fragrance. Sometimes mm. it's a bit like almost sickly. Perf it's like, perfume. wow, yeah, it has a perfumed smell to it, yeah. um, even though it's not uh, scented. Um, but often in the cup, what I find is the texture being a bit thin, um, not having enough sort of volume and depth in the both the mouthfeel and the taste and the aftertaste. Um, mm. and, um, and having quite an intense body feel that can be a bit too jangly for me. Exactly. You know, and so, so for, for, for those reasons and others, I, we've tried lots of Darjeeling's, but we haven't purchased any. Finally, we have a Darjeeling that's now being launched at Mayleaf. And this is one of the creams of the Darjeeling world. This is the true Muscatel from Castleton tea estate in Darjeeling. So let me explain to you and Celine a little bit yeah, about I, Darjeeling. I honestly don't know that much about so Darjeeling. So Darjeeling is a particular area yeah. um, in India mm. uh, and it's got lots of estates right. there. Most of the tea plants that, um, most of the tea plantations in Darjeeling started with seeds that came from China. Right. Okay. So one of the differences between Darjeeling and say Assam teas, etc., mm. is Assam teas come from the you know Assamica varieties that are growing in India, India right. whereas the Darjeeling's are renowned for being started with Chinese seeds. Right. So it's Chinese seeds, and that's very very important, as you will find out with with this particular tea. Um, and then afterwards, what's happened is they've grown them, but then they've also created new clones, and they've right. created cross genetics, and you know just new varieties and new clones. And so Darjeeling mm -hmm. is now scattered with lots of different sort of varieties of cultivars of the tea plant oh, like but that, the yeah. original source yeah. um, of a lot of it is the original chinese seeds right. and i quite like that that mix you know mixing genetics is always a good thing well yes but it's sort of it's an interesting discussion point because it's is, is it just natural genetics mixing um, versus you know it being created in a in a lab that not not to say that that's bad because right. it's still natural genetics but is it being are the clones being created to increase yield yeah. And to increase uh, crop, you know, in, you know, yeah. speed of growth and yield, which generally almost always leads to lower quality tea. Yeah, less, less taste, right? Anyway, so that's what we're going to be discussing okay. here. So Castleton is, when I say the sort of true Muscatel, Castleton at Tea Estate were the first tea estate to coin the term Muscatel. Really? So they oh. were the first one to sell Muscatel tea in 1985. Wow. Okay, Castleton Tea Estate dates back to 1885. Um, so, you know, it was a British tea estate yeah. that was planted originally by Dr. Charles Graham in 1885. 
uh, and was the, this estate was originally called the Kumseri. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Kumseri Tea Estate, um, and it goes by different names as well. But there was a building on the estate that looked like a castle, so they called it Castleton Fair Tea enough. Estate. And you know, yeah. it's now past hands. It's now part of a big group that owns a lot of Darjeeling right. tea estates. <clears throat> um, and so it's been going around for since the 1880s, so a long time. And it has a lot of Chinese bushes still okay. uh, there. In fact, the estimates are around 70% of the tea plantation, tea estate, the Castleton tea estate, is still Chinese-derived bushes. Now, what that means is they're either um, de derived from seed, so grown yeah. and then obviously allowed to cross pollinate make their own seeds keep growing so creating seeds or creating seeds in a nursery or they've been um taking cuttings of those plants really to make a genetically identical although i say that in inverted commas because mm. there's a lot to talk about that but but almost identical genotypes yeah. so 70 percent chinese and then 30 percent other clones and hybrids does that mean that they might have some gushu trees there no 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 we'll talk about that well first oh. of all gushu is over 200 years old it was planted in 1885 yeah, yeah. it's 160 enough. but no um okay. and and these are from the small leaf variety so they're not going to grow into trees like the uh, asamica sure. variety will right so the castleton tea estate 70 percent chinese bushes um apparently from the contacts that supplied me this tea <clears throat> They were growing pretty much by seed mm. up until around the 1960s, mid 60s. Um, and then they started to um, do more um, experiments with um, cuttings. And there was a question mark as to whether or not the sort of just allowing nature to take its course and, and seeds to be planted was better in terms of quality or clones. And so I think at that point, the, my history is a little bit fuzzy, but I'm guessing sort of around the sort of, you know, that time they started doing cuttings and around probably the 80s, they were starting to introduce a few clones in. <clears throat> mm. But um, in 1985, they first created this muscatel and they created it from a summer picked tea. So this musk, this this uh, summer picked black tea, they produced it in a certain way, and it apparently created this incredible muscat flavor. And they first brought that to the market around the same time. Um, the uh, the sort of policy within Darjeeling tea estates was that once a tea plant gets too old mm -hmm. and it's slowing its growth, yeah. that it, it needs to be uprooted. Right? Do they do that in China as well? So they're Seems doing that a little bit in China, but they're doing uh, it much less. They do it a lot in Taiwan. Ah, uh, right. Right. Okay. So once it gets past a certain age and the That's yield it, starts yeah, to drop Taiwan. down, they 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 uproot it, uh, which right. we're always saying no, no, yeah. please don't do that. But it's you know they've got to think about their ec <laughs> economics as well, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there was a senior planter in the mid '80s, and I've written his name down here. Where is it? His name is Veru. was Veru Narain. So a senior planter, Veru Narain, uh, had the foresight to say, no, let's not do this with this tea estate. Oh. Let's, let's instead take these old Chinese bushes grown from seed. Let's cut them back down so that they're literally eight inches from the ground. Whoa, okay. To try to stimulate new growth, right? To try to like speed it up. What? Yeah, so basically they cut it down and then therefore it grew new, like new shoots, new shoots and mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it basically was using the old root system to create, you know, new shoots. Oh, and uh, this was a big, probably a big risk for Castleton. Um, in fact, at the time it was considered to be a sort of low quality estate or a low. Uh, I think it was called a sick estate. Like it was like not producing much, right? Well, that's a bit rude. And they had to bear <laughs> this long it. time of these plants sort of getting maturity where they were producing very little tea, right? Right. So they, they really took a risk. Yeah. But the risk paid off because of the fact that what that has meant is that these old root systems, which develop complexity, there's no question that older root systems and older trees and older plants will have more complexity yeah, of flavor. That mm. has maintained and been preserved in the tea that Castleton produced. And to this day, Castleton is sort of renowned as being the foremost, not only the originator of Muscatel tea, but nothing compares to Castleton Muscatel. Really? And many other tea estates make Muscatel yeah. tea. Um, which we've tasted, yeah. 
oftentimes it's just sort of another way of saying it's a summer tea and it's got nothing to do with the, having any muscatel What taste. What do you mean a summer tea? Because muscatel is picked in the summer. Oh, okay. Right? So, yeah. And so a lot of times you see muscatel samples arrive, but what it doesn't taste of muscatel. It just means, oh, this is like of in, the, summer. in that summertime picking. Okay. And so it's not really like you can't really <laughs> use the name muscatel on a label to determine whether or not it has muscatel. Yeah, because some I remember were like, really not yeah muscatel. and i'm like what's like, this that's got nothing to do with muscatel. almost like more like an assam yeah exactly a, very malty yeah very malty so um, seeing muscatel on the label doesn't mean it has a muscatel taste or flavor right. or character and which we'll talk about that in a little bit but um certainly other tea estates make muscatel and i'm sure that they there are some making good ones if not great ones we didn't find any that we really loved until we tried castleton's range and this was the most expensive batch. <laughs> Obviously all done in blind tasting, but uh, this one just blew our heads off. And we were like, that is the one. And then we found out it was like, like five, six times the price of the yeah. other Muscatels from Castleton. So it is an expensive <laughs> Castleton Muscatel. Um, it's a very expensive lot. Um, other tea estates may be producing some decent stuff, but I think that it is a commonly held sort of opinion that Castleton still is top dog right. in Muscatel tea. And probably or mostly because of the fact that they are using old genetics, seeded Chinese plants. So when I spoke to the Darjeeling producers, I was like saying, okay, what defines for you how you can make Muscatel? And he basically said there are four factors. Mm. The first and probably the most important are the genetics. Right. In other words, the, the quality of the genetics of the tree, sure. Chinese, like original Chinese, like, you know, heritage yeah. is is best um, and older root systems. So, you know, yeah. old Chinese bushes, that's primary. Second is timing. It has to be a, a summer picked tea, right? right. Uh, so higher humidity, hotter temperature, um, leading to third point, which is insects. Now, how much bug bitten versus how little buck bidden is not really, it's not really essential that we have like lots of bugs, but because of the fact that it's summer, you're going to have more bugs, more insect biting of the plant um, is mm -hmm. going to lead to more secondary chemicals being produced that will then be spread out over the plantation and it works like a chemical signaling, signaling system. You don't need to be bitten in order for you to produce those chemicals. So extra you know, um, heat extra, you know, yeah. later on in the year, this is picked in June, more bugs, more likelihood of being bitten. And apparently these Chinese varieties yeah. are more susceptible to being bitten because a lot of the new clones oh. are being produced to be a bit more pest resistant. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's not necessarily bitten. No, not each leaf is definitely not necessarily is not okay. going to be bitten. In fact, the majority of the leaves are not going to be bitten and there might be very, very little biting going on. Right. But it just takes a little bit mm. um, for that chemical signaling system to, to, to go through the, the, the fields. And so, you know, it, it contributes. Plants are so smart, aren't no, they? No, they certainly are. And fourth on the list is skill. Um, skill of... The skill of the producer. Right. Um, and so basically what he said is that that you can sort of... There are lots, there are... Sorry, there are like parts of the Castleton estate uh, that are known for muscat for producing more muscatel teas. Right. Obviously, older Chinese bushes, but also the, the sort of... Uh, aspect, how much sun it gets, etc., yeah. etc. All of Where those things will set. have an have an effect because obviously it's a a, a relatively uh, large area, you know. So you yeah. can have plants that are growing in less favorable and more favorable conditions. But also, he said that it, you're never going to know until the leaf reaches the factory. Right. And once the leaf reaches the factory, there's the, this immediate process of of looking, going, is this going to be a muscatel tea? Right. If it is, then it's treated more carefully. And if mm. they think it's got a lot of potential, yeah. then they'll treat it extra carefully. So the producer's um, ability to spot leaf that's been picked wow. and be able to sort of, I guess, smell it and look at it and go, that is going to be potential for a muscatel. And then a, employing a little, bit more, a little bit more care and attention on the processing of the leaf. So four yeah. factors that will mm. determine whether or not it's going to be a muscatel. Surely they must look at the bushes and go, that bush 
with you for that. Well, they know it needs to be Chinese. They know it needs to be sort of yeah. seed grown old, ideally. To make the, so they already know when the leaves are coming in. Oh, this is from a prime spot. Right. But you know they may look at it and go, mm, "It's not going to produce that. Let's just sure. put it through our normal processing right. versus let's just take extra care on sure. this processing." So scope of this tea season. This is June eleventh, twenty twenty two. Most muscatels are picked in June. Okay. So June eleventh, twenty twenty two. Cultivars. I said this is all from uh, Chinese. Um, uh, cultivar, original sort of seeded Chinese heritage. The origin, this is Castleton uh, Estate, Darjeeling in India. The picking and processing on this, this is an uh, FTG FOP. <laughs> that FTG means nothing to FOP. me. <laughs> uh, so finest, tippy, golden, flowery, orange, pico. So there's yeah. different grades within okay. Indian tea uh, picking. Um OP being the sort of lower grade or BOP, broken orange pico. And then right. as it becomes more fine, it becomes, you know, FTG, FOP is, is considered one of the top. You can get special. So SF, you can get like there's one grade above in terms of picking, but then it would just be extra buddy. And as you can see here, I'm not going to lie. These leaves don't look anything like to necessarily write home no. about. Um, <laughs> you know, they're not True. they're not like singing at you going, wow, look at how beautiful that is. It's not. Um, but um, they are fine pickings. Processing on this. Let me go through the processing briefly of Darjeeling teas for you. So the Darjeeling processing, you can get a close up here. Darjeeling processing is, um, it is withered for about 12 to 14 hours, so a long wither time. Yeah. Um, that is going to build up a lot of fragrance. So withering 12 to 14 hours indoor, so it's indoor withering. Not sun. Mm, mm. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, <laughs> indoor withering 14 uh, over sort of those air blowing troughs. Remember those yeah. troughs that we, we, we yeah. used to see? When we went up the mountain and we did the white tea. Yeah, white filming. tea. Yeah, a lot. So withered indoors until there's a sixty percent reduction in uh, moisture. Uh, it's probably very humid outside, so I think that's probably one of the reasons why they don't uh, do it outside. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then they um, roll it. Right. They roll it for about forty minutes. So you know they called that a light roll. That sounds quite heavy to me. But anyway, is that the, the oolong roll? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll use those machines to roll it. So it'll be rolled uh, for 40 minutes. Mm. And then it is oxidized for a long time. Well, longish, three to three and a half hours. Mm -hmm. So it's oxidized. Um, and uh, the reason why I say a relatively long time is because first flush Darjeeling, they do it for about 30 minutes. So, so for second oh. flush, that's why the first flush always looks a lot greener, oh, right? So this is okay, like oxidized yeah. for longer, three to three and a half hours at a temperature of 22 to 24 degrees Celsius. Wow, very So I like about um, like talking to the, the, the factories in Darjeeling, they give you very specific uh, information. You're not used to that, are you? Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> you have to like drag it out of people. Um, and uh, it uh, then is sent to dry, you know, through those conveyor belts like we saw with Oolong. So a lot yes. of similarities in production. Sure. Um, okay, so that's the uh, picking and processing. Elevation is between 900 and 1,300 mm. meters. Here we go. Temperature of the kettle. Oh. No, that's a pump. I'm not awake, am I? Um, um, so the reason why we've got two here mm. is because we're going to see if we can figure out how to brew this best. I'm going to be doing Gong Fu and Western. Right. I've got uh, the equivalent of three and a half grams per hundred grams here. And I didn't do the calculation. I've got two and a half grams for 150, for 100. 50 mil, what's that? Divide that by three. <laughs> Hello, you look at me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about 1.6 grams per 100 mil. Yeah, 1.6, 1.7 grams. So uh, 3.5, 1.7, so it's about half. Okay, but usually Darjeeling is done Western style. Usually Darjeeling is done. If you look anywhere on online, most of the places, I would assume, they're going to give you Western or like this style of brewing. And this is a little bit more than Western. This is still like 1.6 sure. per 100 gram, yeah. uh, per 100 mil. That would sort of, normally it would be about one, right? Yeah. So a it's a little, a little like... bit more. So we'll put that in here. 
right? And we're gonna let that, we're gonna not do that now because I wanna first do nose dry leaf. Yeah, sounds good. Right, so let's heat up Hot this. Water. So. So, um, so you didn't go for 90 first 90 degrees, by the oh, way. Ooh. Yeah, so mm. just keep your eye on it, turn that on, and just keep your eye on it, keep that lid off. We wanna okay. go to 90. I advise 90 degrees for this kind of broken small leaf tea, up to you, but this is my advice, 90. Sorry, what were you saying? I didn't go for what? For the first flush. Yeah, so first flush teas, I really do like the aroma. They remind me of high mountain Nepalese teas as well. Yeah. You know, very flowery, sometimes too flowery, mm. as I said. But I always find that the taste in the mouth is the taste is okay but there's something that i don't like about the the feel the finish and the overall sort of experience i don't find it's it has enough uh it does it doesn't have enough middle it doesn't have enough substance okay in both in taste and in both in texture now all the people who love First Flush Darjeeling screaming at the screen right now. <laughs> like, I'm sure that there are, I have tasted some very, very good ones and we have come close. And, I, and, and you may have some incredible First Flushes in your, in your collection. If you love it, you love it. But for me, it just doesn't quite hit the, the spot for me. And in fact, remember, a lot of times we were thinking about doing blends because I always felt the First Flush had so much great um, high-end stuff going on but then I was saying, let's blend some flushes together what? to make what I would consider the perfect Daji Ling. Yeah, so, it was like a white tea. It had that white tea taste like to it. a very, like. very flowery white tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had some of those little uh, almond notes as well. You in, just wanted a bit more. But also quite oof. hard in the mouth, I yeah. found. Can I smell? Yeah, go for it. So Castleton Muscatel, one of the most... Uh, renowned Muscatel air, uh, estates, and this was the most expensive oh. lot that we tasted. It smells really good. It smells like, um, you know those uh, profiteroles? Like the French one with the chocolate. Oh yeah, I it see has, which like, way you're, yeah. a baked, a light baked thing with Shoe this, pastry. Yeah, shoe pastry. Yeah, it's a very yeah. good, that very light shoe pastry smell. Yeah, with some milk chocolate Yeah, in milk there. chocolate, it's interesting. Normally I would think Muscatel, you think yeah. immediately of fruits, but yeah. it definitely has that. Um, and it's got some flowery note as well that I would normally associate with that classic, you know, Darjeeling high mountain flowery smell. I don't really know what the flower is um, because it, it's very different from a Chinese like tea flowery smell in my opinion. Um, it's interesting. I mean, I get... Like, again, kind of going away from what you're saying, flowery, but those um, cherries in those chocolates that has, like, those alcohol oh, yeah. soaked yeah, cherries in those so chocolates. So sort of alcohol, yeah, those liquor smoke. Yeah, but the cherry yeah. bit. Like, no, I'm has, getting chocolate. I'm getting, I do get smell? the cherries. I do get the preserved cherries. I do get the shoe. But there's, there's, there's a theme that runs through a lot of these um, high mountain Nepalese and Darjeeling uh, teas that is a certain sort of creamy, almost like condensed milk sort of note oh, to it. yeah. But then has a certain floweriness on top. Yeah, this is the problem with small leaves. <laughs> uh, if you weren't here, that would have just been on my face the whole time. <laughs> anyway, so we're talking prof chocolate profiteroles, um, cherry, preserved cherries. Yes. We're talking condensed milk. You know those... I definitely get condensed milk now you've said but it. But you know uh, in Brazil, they cook down the condensed milk. So it has that. Oh, it's brigadeiro. You always talk about it. And I, love I really it. want to try yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you don't know it. But sort of a cooked down condensed milk. So even more condensed definitely. condensed milk. But a little mm. flowery... Um, I'm there gonna say I'm gonna say the closest that sort of pops into my mind is like orange blossom. Really? Like just yeah. Yeah, actually. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. So we're gonna give these a rinse. So we are gonna be doing Gong Fu style just to uh, get the the smell of these, which is why. Oh. Gong Fu is always best to Looks get that thick. sensorial note. Doesn't wow. it? Like, just from the drop, the drops are so like heavy. 
I want to get the temperature right because I feel like with Darjeeling, they're such small leaves. You want to yeah, make sure it's... I think 90 is right. You can play with 95 if you want. No, I want 90. Okay, now, but once you've hydrated the leaf, then the fruit just comes at you. I'm getting... Um, Stop. I'm getting Alfonso mango, which I always then associate with wow. a fresh turmeric. So fresh turmeric, Alfonso mango. I'm getting um, geranium. Um, so the classic muscatel note that I always associate with those kinds of teas, um, we're talking mm, Oriental Beauty, yeah. uh, Dongfang Mei Ren, or we're talking about some of the um, more uh, interesting... Um, oh, uh, yeah, you really... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? Dongfang think, Mei Ren is think, what think, I heard. No, the Chinese one. Uh, anyway, gone. Are you talking about oolong? Yeah. Anyway, and it doesn't matter. Um, so these these um, what they call bug bitten teas, this muscatel smell, geranium I get a lot of. Generally, I generally get a lot of muscat, muscat grapes, mm. which I get there. But this is definitely more like for me, warm tropical saffrons and spices and mangoes. Definitely. So you There's feel like you're moved to a different place, which is what's so amazing about tea, is that you really travel with the Yeah, I was just going to say, I feel like I'm going through these different exotic places and it smells amazing. Like I, I get mangosteen, actually. You get mangosteen? Yeah, which reminds yeah. me of the Eastern beauty, how we enter beauty of this world. You know, yeah. it has that side of it, but it also has the saffron on top. So it's yeah. kind of, yeah, it's like a little, it's a halfy. Got a bit of the Asian and the, <laughs> I mean, Asian Indian is the same. Yeah. <laughs> Got a bit of the. It definitely, it's definitely, <laughs> no, you can, you can sense that this is Chinese heritage grown in yeah. a, uh, in a different environment. Yeah. Saffron for sure. I'm getting uh, sponge cakes though. There's a warmth to it as well. So I'm getting like sponge cakes soaked in syrup. Like Victoria sponge no, cake? No, I'm Im imagining like Indian Ooh. desserts again, like, you know, s quite syrup heavy uh, oh, um, yes. sponge cakes. Those little square things. Yeah, that's what I'm imagining. The, is it cardamom on top or something know. like that? But it's, yeah, very sweet, but yeah. Really spicy mm. and fruity. Mm. Um, I'm also getting uh, like that loquat. Lockwat in syrup, you know, like Lock similar to lychee, but again, syrup. preserved. It's got a sort of preserved quality oh, to it. Focus. Let's so. see. Yeah, focus. It looks Hello, focus. greener. Oh, no, that's just your camera. Focus. Man. There you go. It's nice that you told me about the history, though, because I didn't really, well, didn't know anything about Castleton. So. Okay, well, let's brew both Ooh. of these up. Go for it. Violin resin. Yeah, I get that resin. So much. Some, well, some for some teas. I... Very very. Um, yeah, I mean, but then it's, it's all. It has that pine note as well. So yeah, very piney resin for mm. sure. Okay. Let's brew up. So we're going to be doing what a thirty second brew here, and do this one as well. Okay, that's a western brew. And we're going to leave that for about five minutes. So. Do you have a timer? Do you want me to put a timer? No, nah, that's fine. You're using your brain timer? Yeah. Don't know how you do that. <clears throat> well, I failed because that's definitely more than 30 <laughs> seconds already here. <laughs> okay, now brew it care um, pour it carefully because small leaf. That's it. Oh, look at my proneness. That is, that is proneness, even though that's not a word. That is <laughs> it. Okay. Uh, that's a beautiful, beautiful color. Beautiful color. Beautiful color. Orange sunset vibe. It really has got like a resin, like a violin resin quality to it. Wow. I get the profiteroles back. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So it bounces between some warm bready notes, um, but then, and, and a lot of spice and a lot of fruit. Okay. You would want nothing less for the king of muscatel. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Texture is, I would say, it's medium, mm. right? It's not thick. Yeah, no, it's it's not, no, it's not thick. It's not oily. No, it's medium. Yeah, you're right. It's medium. So I I never really expected Darjeeling to, to really hit me with a load of sort of thick oiliness. 
It's medium, it's still sort of voluminous, it's still got like good body in the mouth. So interesting. It really reminds me of Oriental Eastern Beauty slash Little Tongmu. Yeah, yeah, you know? some of those souchongs, that's probably what I was thinking of, even mm. though they're not bug bitten. But yeah, the fruitier, the fruitier black teas. It's got a quenching taste to it. Uh, yeah, what do you mean? I'm picking up like a weird, weirdly like um, lemony like soda oh, note yes. to it. Seven up or something like. Yeah, like is it Sprite or Seven up? I think Seven up. I think it's Seven up. Yeah, it's kind of got like this quite quenching, and the aromas in the in, the aromas That's are quite so nice. Seven up. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's like after you swallow, you get that aftertaste. Yeah, of, it's wait. pretty cool. <laughs> It's a, an unusual one. Yeah. There's so much flavor going on here, though. I get the mangosteen I was smelling earlier. Yeah. But on top of that, it's more complex. It's, it's, oh. it's got all the things we said before, right? Mm. So mangosteens, Alfonso mango, saffron, yeah. turmeric. All mixed in. Um, what did we say before? Geranium, Resin. resins, yeah. pint, sort of piney resins. Um, it's got... I would say the addition in the taste of, um, I'm picking up a little warmth of cinnamon. Oh, there is a warmth. I wasn't sure if it was cinnamon or something else, but it might be the turmeric that I'm thinking. I'm also Can picking up it? a pepperiness that is reminiscent of, and it's light, but it's reminiscent. You know, when you go to um, uh, Thailand or, or, or Malaysia and they cook the, those foods with green peppercorns like like this sort of it's oh. just it's like a whole bundle of yes, green peppercorns, loads of little Lo peppercorns. And, and you bite them and it's got this really lovely fresh green peppery yeah. note yeah, yeah yeah i pick up a bit of that yeah, but yeah, it yeah. is light that's really it is light yeah that's so true all right go for it wow i would never have like worked that one now it's just there and it's got yeah. a little zing almost like a sort of szechuan pepper zing to it as well you're like memory bank of taste is quite insane <laughs> oh, i do love those peppery i love i, I, I any they, dish they that comes so fragrant, that have got loads of those green peppers and i'm just i'm a happy camper how many seconds do we do until it feels right <laughs> which is about now <laughs> also in my mouth i'm getting orange peel yes like that's that you know yes sichuan peppercorn zing orange peel sort of citrus zing yeah you know, peppercorn, green peppercorn zing, I sort of equate them in, in the same way. In fact, I once made a Sichuan peppercorn and orange sorbet just off. What? Yeah, I just knew that those, well, I felt that those those would really work well together. And it was so good. If you want to make a sorbet, just infuse it, an orange sorbet, with it, just infuse it with a, um, a little bit of Sichuan peppercorn. All right, let's take a look. What happened at, to my tasting of that? Oh, uh, that was before our time. Okay, let's stop, 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 stop. Let's just compare color. So that was about 50, about sort of four to five minutes. Yeah, I think you, you did well. Um, color. Oh. Definitely, this is still a lot darker, yeah, right? It's a still lot, darker. lot darker. Mm. There you go. <laughs> the color difference. All right, should we taste uh, the Western first? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, let's do it. Let's see if the texture, that's what I'm interested in, see if the texture improves. Because I genuinely, you know, we've got to, you can't just assume that, I'm always assuming. that Gong Fu is best. I'm always assuming Cheers, that. everybody. <laughs> Cheers. It is slightly thicker. Oh. And it's smooth. Oh, I'm surprised by that. Oh, I wanted to say, we are talking about all the zest earlier, but let's be clear about this, that it's not bitter. Oh, no, in not any way, no. shape or form. It's just a that terpene zest okay this, this is, is interesting yummy. because this is sort of it's uh the the longer brewing time has brought out i would say more of the warm notes in it mm -hmm. like yeah. it, it, uh, and that makes sense because with time a lot of these very transient aromatics escape but that's one of the good things about gong fu is that you sort of capture those but it's made a softer smoother slightly thicker brew because of the longer extraction um and I really like it. I do really like it. I'm going to see how that compares with the other one. I'm actually quite shocked because I'm so used to Western brews after tasting a Gong Fu brew being very bland. 
but this isn't bland. This is actually really rounded. It's very like, rounded, yeah. I get more of those floral fragrant notes, yeah. which is weird. I would have less thought. of the zest, more of the the flowers, yeah, and more of the more of the uh, syrup sponges and stuff. Mm. All right, I'm going to taste the the Gong Fu. Mm. It's almost like the other one has like a bit too much of the saff. No, maybe not no, the saffron. No, try this second infusion. Okay. No, I'm sold. It's Just as thick, if not thicker now. Now it, it's still medium, but it's, it's, you know. Oh my God, okay, yeah. And it has got bags of flavor. Oh my God. Bags of bags of flavor. Yeah, okay. That cinnamon <laughs> spice is coming through. No, yeah, it's a Gong Fu win. Um, but still good. I have to say, no, yeah. if you go Western style with anything, then go with that because actually, yeah. <laughs> I'm still like you understand down that. that this was made with that brewing profile in sure, mind. Um, sure. Mm. Mm. And so much more resonance. Just so much more body. So much more body. flavor <laughs> as well. And as I said, more of the spices. I'm getting so much fresh turmeric, which I love. Fresh and cinnamon. turmeric. I get the and cinnamon, cinnamon. More now. Yeah. Amazing. Makes me want to have like a turmeric latte. Actually, I'm. <laughs> no, I keep going. Can you imagine like a super strong muscatel latte? Oh, no, 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 no. I said it and then I. I, no. I, I it's cringed. better to just. Yeah. No, this needs to be drunk pure. Okay. Let's brew up another one. Right. I know we're rinsing through it, but I know this video is already epic. <laughs> Not gonna mix that. Mm -hmm. Smell empty cup, maybe? Good opportunity for you to do that. Yeah, it's really fragrant, this one. It's a very different character, the, the, the Western. Mm. I would say, yes, give it Western a try or give this brewing profile a try. If you go to our website, you'll look at, you'll see the, the Western brewing style. I'll sort of tweak it so that it's more like this sort of parameters. Give it a try because it definitely produces Gosh. a different experience. More, more sort of warming. I, 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 would, I will say that the the empty cup smells very sweet, like, I want to say custard. Yeah, custard. Wow. Very, very warming and sweet. Yeah, like a, um, cinnamon, with, like a sprinkle of cinnamon on custard. S yes. Yeah, like English custard, you know, with, the, with your yeah. pudding. <laughs> English custard, hot, cinnamon buns. Hot custard. Yeah, exactly. Hot custard on cinnamon buns. Um, uh, uh, spiced, spiced like treacle cake. Oh my goodness. Oh, winning, winning smell of the empty cup. Ooh. It reminds me of um, gingerbread men, you know? Oh, yes. Or no, 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 no. Ginger, gin, Jamaican ginger cake. You know those Jamaican oh, ginger cakes? That's a lot more hefty in the yeah, treacle. Yeah, Jamaican ginger cakes. I don't, oh I, I don't remember Jamaican oh, ginger cakes. That is straight up. Oh, man. Those I Jamaican ginger that. cakes. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. This, um, Still a bit hot, no? That's fine. <laughs> You're like, video needs to end soon. Oops. So we've done all the tasting notes apart from... The finish. Let's talk about the finish in the mouth. Um, I would, you know, with, with the other Darjeeling's I've tried, I actually felt my mouth being quite dry. Mm -hmm. This doesn't have that so much. It still has a little tiny bit, but n no way near the level of the other ones. Like yeah. I find that a lot smoother, like way smoother than a lot of the other ones. But it does transform, I think, to a... Not flooding, but a gentle, juicy coolness. Yeah, to it. yeah. And the other thing is, the back of your throat is left with such fragrance. Mm. Like I just, it's like I'm still tasting. It's like it's just staying there, and you just, as you're talking, you're tasting it. Yeah, it's you know? got. It's definitely got. It's that thing, isn't it, that we always talk about? Does it have this sort of um, this aftertaste and finish that? usually represents high quality bushes and mm. what i can say to you from wow from the tasting that we've done this is third infusion I tell you what, i'm going to focus manually because this is driving me nuts it's third infusion is delicious i haven't tried it yet because i'm going nuts with this camera i mean lens. i usually 
It's, it's usually not my favorite infusion, but I think I might make it my favorite infusion in this tea. What? You haven't even tried fourth. Anyway, um, mm. so what was I saying? Yeah, the, the smell, uh, sorry, the aftertaste represents quality of bush. And from speaking to the um, uh, producer mm. and from uh, my own understanding, in order to produce this kind of level of tea with muscatel flavor, you need old bushes. Wow, the aftertaste is really yummy. It's just exceptional tea. Yeah. It's an exceptional tea. This is this is definitely a, a different type of tea you feel to all all other teas we've tried, even though it has similar taste profiles to some others. Yeah. Just feels like a world of its own. And that's what you were looking for. That's exactly what I was looking yeah. for. If I was gonna dive into Darjeeling, it needed to be a really like it needed to be exemplary. And I think that this is an exemplary second uh, summer flush muscatel Darjeeling. Um, and I, for those of you who are Darjeeling um, experts, please let me know your thoughts. Yeah, always um, And for those of you who have not tried Darjeeling before, I think this is a great tea to <laughs> start at the top. <laughs> yeah, start right at the top, so you just don't want to well, try anything else now. <laughs> as I said, there are, I'm sure, many, many great Darjeelings out there, but... I think that this is, well, this is certainly one of the best, if not the best that I mean, I've I'm ever tried. Definitely enjoying that one. There you go. Body sensation on this. I can already start to feel a, a nice stimulation. As I said, sometimes Darjeeling's are a bit jangly for me. I don't know, but I don't think that that's going to be the case for this one. I think it's going to be energetic for sure. You got that jangly from a kid's cartoon, didn't you? No. Jingly jangly. No. Yeah. <laughs> Don't presume you know where I you got my You never say jangly. I've said jangly before, I'm sure. We have to trawl through the video archive. I think all the parents will know which one. They'll be like, Wait, is it? I don't know which one. The bunny one, the bunny bing. No. Jing, jingly jangly, that's what he says. <laughs> you see. Maybe, maybe it like, got soaked in. Oh, um, but do you feel any body sensation here? I'm honestly so concentrated on the taste because every time I get a mouthful, I just get such like lingering taste that I just yeah, I know. just want to concentrate it's, it's on it. It's a very powerful taste. It really rem it's really reminiscent. It's it, it pictures a scene of, a, of you walking into some sort of um, um, Indian like bazaar of fruits and mm. spices, right? Just like plums, peaches, you know, um, mangoes very ripe and then next to like a stall selling saffron cinnamon yeah uh, next to somebody selling some sort of sponge desserts um so it is a real heady mm. heady tea but it's got the depth of character and the body to back it up and that's the thing i don't like to buy teas that just have lots of heady fragrance but don't have it in the mouth and this has it in spades i think it's like a bit of diesel Diesel. <laughs> bit, bit of diesel. Sound, <laughs> bit diesel. Sounds, uh, sounds suspicious. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, that's it, tea heads. Check out our other videos. Taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing mayleaf.com. You're saying goodbye now. <laughs> you do your weird <laughs> little, <laughs> do little weird uh, robot <laughs> dance. Uh, check out our other videos. Taste our teas wherever you are in the world by browsing on our website, mayleaf.com. And come visit us if you're ever in London. Other than that, this is Celine and I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves, deserves bad tea. tea. See ya. Bye.